What I want to do today is not so much present to you the proposals of the Commission. Uh, you have all have access to the report, you've heard a lot about it, and the proposals in themselves are not that interesting, but more the background of these proposals, where do they come from, why were they made, what's the basis of it, and given my position also here in the faculty and in the university, where I'm chair in, in higher education, I want to reflect upon uh, two important elements that until now, in my view, have been neglected in the debate. First is the knowledge base in the higher education. Most reactions were gut feelings, were based on, on interest, but not so much based on the knowledge of the dynamics of the system. And that is one of my areas of interest. And second, the international context. For the knowledge society, the knowledge economy has also led to a re-evaluation of the role of especially the university in national and international politics. In Europe we see a very clear example in the various publications of the European Commission the last eight to ten years, the Lisbon Agenda in 2000, uh, Anthony Giddens, the, the famous British uh, sociologist, has even suggested that uh, the main reason why the European leaders have agreed upon uh, the Lisbon Agenda, the Lisbon 2000 Agenda, is that they wanted to have a grip on the university and on higher education policy. The European Commission addresses higher education, especially the university, as the knowledge institution, um, and academics, those working in universities, as the knowledge workers. Also, national governments have, using uh, this, this concept of knowledge economy, knowledge society, as a frame of reference, have introduced major reforms of higher education. Um, and even in the area of development cooperation, things are changing. The Glen Eagles uh, Summit in, in, um, in uh, 2005 of the G8, for the first time in, in the, um, the history of development cooperation, identified higher education, higher education as a core area for uh, investments. And uh, especially in Africa, uh, this should lead to, an, uh, to better governance, uh, better development structures, etc. The proposed budget, overall budget, to invest in higher education in Africa uh, was uh, um, over a billion dollars. So over the last seven, eight years, we've seen this uh, rapid rise, so to say, of higher education as an, um, an area of, of policy interest, and that is, of course, also forming major frame of reference for, for the work of our Commission. <coughs> First, let me go to um, the mandate of the Commission. Um, most of you will know that, but just to go through it quickly. It was a comprehensive mandate. Some uh, have afterwards commented a very um, unclear mandate because it included practically everything, except for tuition fees. We were not allowed to talk about tuition fees state ownership of the higher education institutions after the um, almost disaster with the previous National Commission, the Restyle Commission, it was clear that uh, uh, the Minister didn't want to burn his fingers again. The degree structure, uh, Bologna was seen as uh, offering uh, a framework for a degree structure that was not going to be changed in the next 20 years, as well as the overall research policy, but we were of course expected to address research and research policy in as far as it was of relevance for the dynamics and structure of the higher education system. Our starting point was the year 2026, uh, implying that we were constantly focusing on uh, what would be an appropriate development for the structure of Norwegian higher education in the next 10 to 20 years. So we're not talking about next year, 2010, but our ultimate focus is on uh, the situation 10 to 20 years from now. in higher education, uh, we lack a political strategy. Unlike, for example, Denmark, the Norwegian uh, political arena has not come up with a national strategy for the development of higher education or the development of knowledge. The Kunstkapslifte, the lift of, lift of uh, knowledge, does not necessarily include higher education. We have um, 38 institutions in Norway, uh, all competing for means, students and staff that are integrated into one comprehensive law. And these, uh, the ambitions of these 38 institutions are at the moment more important for the dynamics of the system 
than the national needs in uh, higher education. So it's the individual institutions' ambitions that are driving the dynamics of the system. The traditional division of labor between the universities and the high school is broken down. I refer to that. There's a growing fragmentation of research training. In the report, we refer to California, a state in the US with about 40 million inhabitants. It has um, 10 research universities that are allowed to offer doctoral <coughs> degrees. Norway, we have at the moment um, 4.7 million inhabitants, and we have 18 institutions, public institutions, that are offering um, doctoral degrees. Fragmentation with uh, consequences, amongst other things, for quality uh, and for uh, productivity. There, is, uh, um, uh, there are indications coming out of the evaluations of NOCUT that um, there is a varying and partly low quality in bachelor level professional education in, in, in the high school. There are uh, heterogeneous institutions, there are many small disconnected research groups in uh, many of these institutions. Autonomy has become more important than uh, the national system and um, uh, joint goals and interests. And politicians and the media in general are far more interested in daycare centers and basic education than in higher education. 